So Dr. Moore just spoke to our entire student body. Any student athlete that wanted to participate had a chance to listen to Dr. Moore, who's an associate professor at Grand Valley for History. He teaches a class on sport activism, and he shared with us some of his knowledge, a great hour, and we have our diversity and inclusion panel here with us to talk about what they learned. So as I turn it over, Reese Green from Lacrosse will kick it off. She'll talk about what she took away from that hour with Dr. Moore. Reese, go ahead. Yeah, so um, Dr. Moore is actually my faculty mentor here at Grand Valley, um, as well as uh, a professor that I've had for, I think, four classes now. Um, so I really like the way that he teaches history because I think it's really accessible for people who might not necessarily have a history background. Um, and he kind of focuses on both sports history, civil rights history, and a mixture of the two in his class called the Black Athlete. And his focus is a lot on um, Black athletes, specifically in activism, and how Black athletes throughout history have used their voices to um, both inspire the masses and to cause effective change within our political system. And I think that from um, the conversation we just had with him and the questions that were posed, um, I think even on the smallest level that we have as Division II athletes at Grand Valley, um, I think he really proved that we do have a voice. Um, whether it's joining a club on campus or trying to inspire those around us to vote. Um, I really think that he inspired me through his presentation to really be an activist on campus and to use my voice as much as I possibly can. That's a really good takeaway, especially this time of year with election season coming up. Judith, I know you asked a couple of questions there after he was done speaking, so I'll turn it over to you now. What were your big takeaways from the meeting with Dr. Moore? Um, I think the most important thing uh, that I learned, especially, is that this whole thing of activism of athletes is not something new. Uh, I feel like a lot of people, especially me, I thought that, especially after uh, Trayvon Martin, I thought it was something new, like, you know, athletes finally speaking out. Um, they're, not be, they're not afraid anymore. They, uh, they actually feel like there's something important. I really thought it was something new. I really thought that it was something of this age, you know, like, before people were too scared to talk about it. And I feel like uh, he, so Dr. Moore explained perfectly well that this is not something new. This has been going on for years and years now. Um, and I think that just because with social media, it's more widespread, people know more about it, but this is definitely something new. And I think that's my biggest takeaway from this, uh, from his lecture, basically. Yeah, definitely. Um, the fact that we are still talking about it and still continuously being talked about over through all these years is very special. I think that's very important to highlight for sure. That's a great point because he actually did in his conversation talk about it being in two separate parts revolved around Trayvon Martin, right? So he yeah. talked about the people who were being activists in the 1960s and then it kind of went away for that 30 year gap until you got to the Trayvon Martin issue. So as you see that there was this other movement but it was dormant, what does that mean to you? As you know that this was, or they're kind of the same themes and the same headlines of the 1960s that you see now. Yeah, no, definitely. So, yeah, it's, it's, it is the same, but I feel like social media really helps. I think that's the one thing that's so different from this age than back, to, back in 1960s. Social media really made it possible for everyone to see it, and not just people watching sports. Because, for example, I barely watch basketball, right? So the reason why I know about LeBron James is because of social media, basically about Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, like – uh, his shows, like that's why I know about what he's doing. I think that's the biggest difference between this age and in 1960s really is accessible to, to spread information so quickly. I think that's what really helped this whole movement become a lot broader than just athletes and people who enjoy watching sports for sure. That's a really good point. And I know you say you don't watch a lot of basketball, but hopefully you at least watch DVSU basketball. And that brings us to our yeah. next <laughs> student athlete yeah. here on here, Steve Lloyd, member of our yeah. men's basketball team. Steve, I'm going to ask you for what your takeaways were from this conversation with Dr. Moore. Yeah, I think, um, well, really every time I listen to Dr. Moore, you know, speak, because I had him as a professor as well, I'm always fascinated with how much knowledge and of the history that he knows and is able to explain it to everybody in a simple form and give you a better understanding as to what the origins or what the roots are between any sort of topic. And I think he did that again tonight. Um, just being able to go all the way back to start with Joe Lewis up to the point of today and seeing how the the growth, you know, continued to, you know, 
well, grow essentially, you know, as the years went on and there was a sort of little, a little break in between. And then Trayvon Martin came around as Judith, Judith was talking about. So, uh, and I'm also glad he was able to, you know, touch on um, women's activism in these, in these social uh, issues as well, just because I feel like they don't get as much praise as they should most of the time, uh, especially like the WNBA he touched on um, just, you know, how, um, you know, forthright and more so aggressive they are as far as with the actual, you know, being an activist itself, like saying like, hey, you need to vote for this particular person, um, which is something that you don't usually see, you know, even if that person is going against your actual owner of the team um, that's actually running in the race, they want you to vote for, you know, the the opposition. So, you know, I'm, I'm always glad how he's able to tie all these things together and really bring it into one whole picture for us to understand. Yeah, you mentioned that Georgia Senate race. I just want to highlight that one real quick. I'm glad you brought it up. What does that as an inspiration tool do for somebody who's saying, well, I can't speak out because of X, Y, and Z, when there is a WNBA team willing to speak out against their own owner and somebody who is a big piece of the financial part of their league, they're willing to speak up against that person directly? Yeah, I think think that that situation is a prime example of, athletes realizing the power that they have when they all speak together um because I, I i'm pretty sure they you know thought about it for a good amount of time to say hey if we all get together and say this there's nothing that really that the owner can do because we are the main core of what makes this organization go anyways so if we come together we have more power than the owner president whoever it may be so um, I think that's just a prime example of, you know, athletes actually using their voice for the, you know, the social issues that matter. It's a great takeaway. Allie Thompson, volleyball. You are the final one on my string. So you are the last one for no other reason than that. So we turn it over to you. What'd you take away from the hour? Um, I would say the biggest thing for me was the focus on history, like through athletics, because I looked a good amount into like taking U.S. diversity classes and that type of stuff. So looked into more kind of history as a whole, but not like specifically through athletics and like what athletes um, have taken lead on being activists. And so, yeah, I thought it was interesting. Like I wasn't aware at all of kind of the 30 year gap. I know you already touched on that, but just how like once athletes started getting paid, then there was kind of more on the line for them. So it kind of caused like a lull in the push for change. And then just starting up again like 10 years ago with Trayvon Martin and then obviously like there's a big push right now I like how we talked about the momentum that's going on right now a little bit because I think that's an important thing like a lot of people are kind of hopping on board right now and making a push or speaking up at the moment but for us to make sure we're aware to like continue that throughout our time here and throughout the rest of our lives and not just kind of doing it while the momentum's going right now. Yeah, that's a great point. And, you know, Judith kind of touched on this as well, but how do you jump on that momentum? What are you, in your mind, what's your next step now kind of taking in this information about activism and the importance of it? How do you then transfer that to what you want to do here? There's only a few days left until election day, but as Dr. Moore said, this doesn't stop on November 3rd or November 4th. This is something that keeps going. So how do you take that next step? Yeah, I think one huge thing for me is like kind of educating other people and other people who I guess don't like take it upon themselves as much and like I come from an area that is like there's not much diversity it's very predominantly white and so like kind of having some of the tough conversations with people from home and like friends that I've grown up with um that aren't able to be well not that they're not able to but like don't have as many opportunities as I've had here um with different classes and like attending zoom calls like when we were on tonight so just kind of continuing to like educate those around me and talking about it so to kind of get more people on board with what we're trying to do yeah that's a really good point like we've seen there are nba players or wnba players that are athletes all throughout sport that are willing to take a risk both financially and personally as a brand to try to spread this message because it's important and hopefully us as people who work in athletics or student athletes themselves can use that as an example and a guiding light of what we can do to really go ahead and still make our voice heard and take those risks. So that's a really good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, You guys gave really great responses. Is there anything else you guys want to say? Remember, this is going to go out 
to our viewers, our listeners, our followers on social media. Is there anything else that you guys want to hit on? And I'll open it up to open discussion if you guys have anything you want to say. Um, I would say that as um, a white athlete in a predominantly white sport, um, I play lacrosse and it's, I would argue, almost 98% white. Um, I think it's important to uh, elevate voices, um, especially athletes of color that are um, lacrosse players, whether it's men's lacrosse or women's lacrosse or just athletes in general. Um, I think especially now it's a lot about elevating voices um, rather than trying to speak for people, which I think um, can happen a lot, not necessarily in a, with like malicious intent, but um, I think that elevating voices is the most important thing to do right now because I'll never know what it's like to be an athlete of color. And so I shouldn't speak on experiences like that. That should be something that I should elevate those who want to speak about that. Absolutely. It's a great point. Oh, Anybody else? Yeah. Another thing uh, next to elevating voices, definitely like listening to those voices as well. I know someone said as well in your, in the past few weeks, few, few days, that listening is so important because you might never understand fully what it's like, but at least you can get an idea. Right. So I feel like, uh, listening is the most important part and listening to understand not listening to respond. Right. I think that's the, uh, most important part to me at least is literally listening to understand and not to respond. So. I really appreciate you staying on after having this review discussion. You guys really took away some great points from Dr. Moore. Big thank you to him once again. Thanks to Reese for you for setting this whole thing up. This was outstanding. Walter, Damon Arnold, thank you guys as well for helping out and making sure this whole thing came together. So a really powerful night, I think. Really important message we got over an hour and I'm glad you guys took something away from it. And Thank you so much for your time.